BBC London has learnt that 18 bridges across northwest London will have to be destroyed and rebuilt to make way for the new high-speed rail link HS2. Aside from the cost, the building work would cause huge disruption as the entire Hangar Lane gyratory would have to be replaced. Here's our transport correspondent, Tom Edwards. Nearly 10,000 vehicles an hour can pass through Hangar Lane gyratory, one of the busiest interchanges in London. Imagine the disruption if it had to be replaced. That line is going to be widened uh, and that's why they're going to have to replace the bridge there. The plan at the moment is for the high-speed rail link HS2 to pass directly under the gyratory. It's going to be a construction period of up to seven years. That means noise and disruption for residents, businesses, schools. It's not just here on one of the busiest gyratories in northwest London where HS2 will have an impact. Across Ealing, 18 bridges will have to be replaced. The high-speed rail link HS2 would cut journey times between London and Birmingham to around 50 minutes. The government says it's desirable economically and environmentally. That's fiercely contested, though, by its opponents. Much of the debate has been in the Chilterns, but parts of London would also be disrupted. In Ryslip, they opposed HS2. They'll now be tunnelled under. That's what the local council also wants here in Ealing. What we would like to see is to say, actually, the costs of replacing 18 bridges across the whole of the borough, the disruption, the congestion, the con cause for concern, that legitimate cause for concern that people will have, the chaos, if you balance that out with the potential of actually just tunnelling in Ealing, as they have done throughout the rest of London, it makes absolutely perfect sense. Around Euston, homes will go. There are also concerns that the station won't be able to cope. From the mayor, today at a sporting legacy event, strong words. There needs to be a, a, a way of getting all the passengers debouching at Euston onto a new crossrail too, so that the Victoria Line uh, and the Central Line don't explode with, uh, with the effort. So uh, we're not happy at the moment with the, uh, with the proposals and we're going to be pushing very hard for some improvements before we can get anywhere close to supporting the scheme. The company building HS2 says it's now looking at tunnelling in Ealing as part of a study considering the options. We think that we can reduce the effects on uh, local traffic by putting in things like temporary bridges, by sequencing the bridges uh, in over a period of time. But, as I say, I don't want to prejudge the conclusions of the comparative study. We'll have to wait for that and then look at, that res look at the results. Construction on HS2 would begin in 2017, but many now think more needs to be done to reduce its impact. And uh, Tom's here now, so what happens next? Well, there's a long, long, long way to go. It wouldn't open until 2026. And I think that what that does, it gives opponents a long time to get their voices heard. Also, there's a general election in 2015. I think a lot of Tory MPs will be listening to angry constituents along that route. I think the big unknown, though, is a commission that we're getting at the moment into aviation, aviation expansion in the southeast. That could force changes to this scheme, so I don't think HS2 is set in stone just yet.